on using WebMO or WebMo, as my kids have started to call it at school, um, as my first video was quite a basic, dare I say, uh, attempt. So I've been playing with it this week and um, hopefully I can share with you a little bit more of an expert-ish idea. It doesn't matter um, how long the bonds are when I'm drawing them. I just need to know that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbon atoms. We can go to clean up, comprehensive. It doesn't matter if you do idealized, that looks pretty good. Or mechanics, can I tell the difference? It shifted slightly, I don't really know the difference here. But the thing that I have noticed is this. So if I take my pointing tool and let's click on, let's click on carbon atom number one here. It's seven, so it's a heptane. So carbon atom number one, we can see at the bottom of the screen, it's clearly SP3, which is correct. It's got four electron domains. Click on the second carbon atom. We know it gives us the bond length. Click on the third carbon atom and it gives me a bond angle of 111.828, which is much better and quite close to 109.5, which you'd be quoting from the IB syllabus. Okay, so that's all good. If I click the fourth atom, what do I get? I get the dihedral angle. I mentioned this last time, so I might do a follow-up video on there, but this is a rich area for uh, students and teachers to explore for internal assessments and for extended essay. So what have I done differently since my last video? I have learnt to only play with a fresh molecule. Okay, so if I wanted to, say, add a double bond into here randomly between carbon atoms five and six, I can just drag and drop it and stick that in and I could delete a hydrogen from each. But it doesn't seem to like that. It only seems to like you to play with a new molecule. Okay, so each time you're building a new molecule, I'm spending... 10 seconds to build my new molecule fresh and then everything works absolutely fine. Okay, so it matters the order we click it. It's all going to be SP3, hopefully it's all going to be the same bond angle, 111.828, 111.969, there or thereabouts, 111.959, if my uh, eyesight is working at this moment in time. And you can go down the chain. So you can build different molecules, you can look at the effect on the bond angle just from the front screen. Okay. Let's start a new molecule. Let's do something. Let's do something a little bit more exotic, shall we? Let's get our carbon atoms, and we'll get uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we'll clean this up. Let's go mechanics. There we go. We've got some cyclohexane. Cyclohexane, total strain energy. That's there. Kilocals per mole. It's an easy convert into kilojoules per mole. Just Google it. Have a look if you want to look at the strain energy of a molecule. If you want to research what the strain energy is, that would be a great little uh, research activity for you to explore. That can be complemented very nicely with, if we look at the, uh, I'm gonna love this button here, all right, the electrostatic potential. So it does a little calculating property and you get the progress bar and then you, get, you go, oh, look at that. This is like textbook beauty, isn't it? But let, let's have a look at, as well as it being absolutely beautiful, let's have a look at how this can actually be useful for us as chemists. Okay, so back, 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 clean up. There we go, it's practicing. <laughs> uh, calculate, I'm gonna go to electrostatic potential. There we go, calculating again. Just had to go through because I did a random click and, and and here we have it. So now I want to I want to just move this thing around so I can play with it and have a look. Oh, there we go. So as a as a learner or as a as a teacher, this is beautiful, and we can see the higher regions of electron density and the lower regions of electron density. And what a beautiful model to show students. Particularly, I was using this this week. We were introducing bonding. And we're doing the standard molecules: carbon dioxide and water and ammonia and all the things that the IB love. And I could just draw them, do the electrostatic potential, and the kids could could look, see that, we could play around with it. And instead of my uh, poetic words telling them about this, you know, region of space where it's highly likely or highly probable to find an electron, they can actually physically see these now. Okay, so that's very nice. Let's do another new one. Uh, what should we build this time? Let's have a look. Let's go for something a bit more 
drained, so I'm going to get a bit more higher energy molecule. Um, so I just wanted to, I'd never make an artist, there we go, <laughs> clean up, comprehensive, idealized, beautiful, so we've got cyclopentane here. Um, we could do the calculate, we could do the electron density, molecular orbitals, electrostatic potential, that's great, okay. We can get the strain energy, hit the strain energy in uh, calculate, and you're going to get the contributions to the overall energy of the molecule, all in kilocals per mole, so you can easily convert to kilojoules per mole. Van der Waals forces, brilliant, totally IB syllabus, torsional strain, torsional strain, look at it, it's to do with the uh, extra... Um, Compression of the bond angle by virtue of it being five atoms in a ring rather than six, so it's, it's, it's uh, under stress. Uh, angle bend, bond stretching, you can look at a series of compounds and look at these different factors and perhaps graph them. And that's getting towards, getting closer to, a, to an IA sort of thing. Okay, so we can look up all of these things. The databases, the ferret databases here, PubChem, ChemSpider, we can read them. There, we can get the NMR spectrum, the uh, IR spectrum, the UV spectrum. We can put different substituents onto the ring and then we can look up their different spectra and look at the effects on the uh, chemical shift in an NMR or the vibrational frequency in an IR, etc. Okay, so this actually puts a lot of things at our fingertips as chemists and is a very rich and easy way to look up different compounds that you could be thinking about. So that's great. Okay. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is when you go and um, you move forward within the uh, WebMo <laughs> software, there are these options here. There's Gamess. I'm only using Gamess. I know that you can use Gaussian. And I think NWChem is very good for certain applications. I'm not going to go there. Let's just keep it on Gamess or Games, as my kids are calling it. And then we're going to here. And I'm going to do this on purpose. I'm going to go to uh, Geometry Optimization, UHF, and Accurate. It'll probably not work, but I suspect as I do this, I'm asking it to do the calculations for the molecular orbitals. There's my job at the top. It probably will fail. It will fail because it goes beyond the 30 second window that we get as guest users. So. It's running, it's got 13 seconds on it. Is that going to let me play? Let's just refresh and have a look, see what we get. Now it's at 22 seconds. Go on, fingers crossed for once. I actually want it to fail so I can show you how to uh, defeat the fail and get around it for more complex systems. So it only, it only, it's 34 seconds, that's definitely going to fail. So this software in guest mode only works or very simple molecules. As soon as you introduce ring strain, you introduce uh, bond angles where there's going to be torsional strain within the molecule. As soon as I started introducing the um, substituents, even just putting simple fluorine on a benzene or chlorine on a cyclopentane, it, it just would not would not play. Okay, and that's taken 38 seconds. It it will not play because it's actually doing massively, fantastically advanced uh, molecular orbital calculations, which we are IB chemists, we don't need to get involved in those. But how do we get around it? Well, on the previous screen, uh, we had C5H10, that's my cyclopentane, geometry op optimization, UHF accurate, it saved them. We can go into advanced, no idea what that means, leave it alone. <laughs> you can go into preview, go into preview, so job options at the top, Go into preview and you can hit the generate button. And what this does, it generates a series of instructions to build or to, to calculate the molecular orbitals for any molecules which are too advanced for the uh, 30 second uh, guest parameters on WebMo. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, shift click, I'm going to highlight that sequence of uh, numbers, looks like bond angles here, doesn't it? Uh, sequence of numbers, and I'm going to something called ChemCompute. ChemCompute.org, which is at the top, is completely free. Okay, so the WebMo software um, is a paid service after the 30 second window, but academics got together, I believe it's the story, and said, well, you know, it's a free world, 
go uh, Bitcoin. And people should be able to uh, generate any molecules, molecular orbitals, energies, strain energies, bond angles, all those things, regardless. So they've got an array of computers together, a series of uh, interlinked uh, computers that have lots of uh, computing power. And we are able to use this freely online to build more complex molecules in the same manner as WebMo, but without any time constraint on here whatsoever. So when you go into ChemCompute, you want to hit Gamis, the usual thing, Gamis, which is here. And we want to submit a job. You will land in here. So Gamis, submit a job. And you can submit your own files, which is here. It takes a little while for it to uh, wake up and to bring up the window into which you can paste your um, series of code from the WebMo software, which is in here. Have I got the correct one? So submit guide, ah, here we go, maybe it's this one. Ah, here we go, so sorry, my mistake, my bad. So it's in submit guided, going to submit guided, and then input file is at the bottom here. Copy paste, and all of these are uh, pasted into here for you, and then you can hit submit the job. Fingers crossed, this usually works. Nine times out of 10, it works. And what's happening is you can actually see it's crunching the numbers at the top. That is real-time output from this array of computers in academia, computing the energies and the densities and the orbitals and the, the uh, gradients and all these things. And you can see it crunching away. It's a lot like being in a Matrix movie, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, so this is beautiful to see. There is no limit, no time limit. So you could put anything into here whatsoever. I suspect if you put a sequence of DNA into here, it might you might just do it before you go to bed, wake up in the morning, it might just have uh, crunched the numbers for you. And hopefully, after a certain pace of time where the wheels are spinning, the word success comes up at the top of the screen. So don't forget that UHF calculation, which is there, that's giving the total energy in Hartree units, which we can convert from Hartree's into kilojoules per mole to make it all IB and beautiful. And uh, clearly, cyclopentane is uh, causing it uh, quite a bit of thinking time and head scratching time at this moment. So you can see it going through. So 70 seconds, that took 70 seconds. I think it's done 99% of the uh, calculation. We're now getting the internal energies of the molecule. So I think it's going through every atom around the uh, perimeter of cyclopentane and doing the molecular orbital calculations. This is just a wonderful thing to see. Look at that real computational chemistry. We're in action right before our eyes. So we can see that our molecule, cyclopentane, has appeared underneath. Okay, and you can do the same things with this. Let's put that into kilos of mole. You can do the same things with, with this as you did in WebMo, but no time constraint. And this is also completely free. Okay, maybe I've chosen a simpler molecule. This is perhaps one of the longest <laughs> calculations I've actually seen it done. It's been going for two minutes now. I'm beginning to dry up my ad libbing, ad -libbing between uh, its starting and its ending. <laughs> Um, so in here, you will be able to see that you can get the Debye units for the uh, electronegativities. Uh, you can get the energy of the molecule in kilojoules per mole, clearly. Uh, or you can select kilocals per mole. I think that must be the American one. Or AU units. And uh, toes crossed, fingers crossed, these two wheels spinning around say success in a few seconds time. It's quite fascinating to, to realize that uh, a computer somewhere out there in the, in the, on planet Earth 
is currently crunching numbers for cyclopentane because I asked it to from a, from a condominium in Singapore. <laughs> happy with them on cyclopentane you'll be able to click on them you will be able to get the bond lengths the bond angles and the energies and all those sorts of things that you would have got on the uh, uh, webmost stuff you will get the total energy of the molecule and clearly you can also link out uh, to the uh, databases as well and you can check them out on there okay so what do we have so far uh, still thinking still thinking We'll wait for it. As soon as I say I've had enough, that's it. It will immediately say success at the top. <gasps> Beautiful. We have success. So that took four minutes to crunch cyclopentane. <laughs> and what did we get from this? What we got, we got the total electronic energy for this molecule. Who cares? Well, we care. We're chemists. What could we do? We could do... What's the smallest cyclic uh, alkane we could make? So maybe cyclopropane, isn't it? Uh, and then do propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. And we can look at the energies of those molecules. We can then do substitutions on them. And you can, you can see where I'm going with this. It's quite a sophisticated way to have a look at trends within a uh, homologous series. So we can look at the dipole moments, the bond dipoles, we can click on here. We can, these molecular orbitals, they are arranged in terms of the uh, largest to the smallest. Um, I don't know why this is frozen right now. <laughs> here we go. So it's woken up, yes. So we can click on each one. It's now showing me the dipoles, uh, slightly positive to the slightly negative end. Electrostatic potential, just look at that little beauty. Wow, is this? I think it's still doing some calculations. It's taking, uh, uh, there's a bit of lag in between what I'm doing and uh, what's happening. But this is your next thing to play with. Okay, so hopefully the WebMo video whets your appetite. Now, start to have a play with ChemCompute. So start going into here, make some advanced uh, molecules, go into the preview, Hit generate, paste it into chem compute, into here on submit your job, and then start playing on here. When you click them, as you can see, it takes a little while for it to respond. But what we do have are beautiful uh, numbers and quantification to do with molecules, and it cost me no money whatsoever. I think that's a beautiful thing. Okay, quick update for 